And welcome back everyone. With the recent release of the KB Lake processors and the Z270 platform, well, we felt anxious to get our hands on it to see what all the fuss was about ourselves. So we picked up an i7-7700K and an ASUS Z270 Maximus 9 Hero motherboard. And the Maximus 9 is the entry level into the ROG family. Didn't really see the need to jump past that to get the few extra features like the thermal armor and such that the other ones brought to the table. And I wanted to see kind of where the entry level ROG set you. It's actually a really nice board and just like all ROG motherboards in the past, the packaging is rather exceptional. It's quite nice when you open it up, you really get a premium feel and that's something really good in this price bracket at over $200 for a motherboard on, in for a mainstream platform. It's, it's kind of nice to be able to feel like you've got something for your money there. Now the motherboard itself supports of course those socket 1151 processors at 6th and 7th generation i7, so Skylake and KB Lake, um, that's i7, i5, i3, Pentium, as well as Celeron. Although I couldn't imagine you'd be putting much other than a K-SKU chip in the this particular motherboard. As far as memory support, we have four DIMM slots with a maximum of 64 gigs of DDR4 with a top rated OC clock of 4133. That's pretty fast memory. The fastest we have on hand is 3200 and it shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever running that. On to the <laughs> iGPU. It does support integrated graphics through multi VGA support, HDMI and display ports, which is quite nice. Supports up to 4K through HDMI at 24 hertz and display port up to 4K at 60 hertz, which is quite nice with a maximum shared memory of one gig. Now stay tuned because we're going to see how this iGPU really does up against, uh, I don't know, an A10-7700K? So if you want to see that, stay tuned. That video is coming. As far as uh, multi-GPU support, it supports up to two-way SLI and three-way Crossfire X technology. So that that's quite nice. But before we go too much further into the motherboard, let's take a look at what you get in the box. Accessory wise, you get a user's manual. You do get the Q shield as that helps you put the front panel connectors on there. You get a M.2 screw package, which allows you to add on the 3D printed units as um, pieces to the motherboard, as well as utilize the M.2 adapters. Now it also comes with the CPU installation tool. That's neither here nor there. We did do a video on how that works with the X99 and a lot of people seem to not understand why that exists. It comes with, of course, the support DVD. It come, does come with one uh, high bandwidth SLI bridge that is quite plain. It's just a bare PCB, but with the 3D printing uh, packages, if you either have a 3D printer or know someone with one, you can get a really nice cover for that printed out. Now, it does come with, uh, again, the Q connectors and sticker package, as well as uh, cable labels, and it does come with one uh, 3D printing mount package. That's to help you mount those 3D printed things together. And it comes with a coaster, like uh, an ROG coaster, which, I mean, I guess it seems kind of pointless, but that's just me. Now, before we get looking at the board itself, let's take a look at the back and the rear I.O. We've got one display port, one HDMI, one LAN connector, one USB 3.1, well, black, and then a red, uh, that's the type C, and then a red type A USB 3.1. We also have four USB 3.0s, those are blue. And then we have four USB 2.0s. And one of those can be switched to be used as the USB BIOS flashback tool. It also comes with uh, the audio, it comes with the optical um, out, as well as the clear CMOS and one USB flash BIOS flashback button. And the audio ports, of course. The internal IO ports on the around the bottom are insane the list is really long let's see if we can get through this we've got two rgb headers one usb 3.0 connector one usb 2.0 connector one m.2 up to 80 millimeters then one m.2 up to 110 millimeters one tpm for a trusted um, con a device connection the we have six sata six gigabit connectors we have one CPU fan connector one CPU optional fan connector three chassis fan connector one H pump fan connector one uh, another pump connector, one AIO, AIO pump connector, as well as one Thunderbolt connector. We do have one 8-pin EPS connection, as well as a 24-pin power connector. That's obvious. We know we got to have that. And a plethora of buttons to complement being able to overclock through 
starting the board without needing a case, whether if you use it on a test bench, those all come in very, very much needed whenever you do that. Now, of course, we got 3D mount ports uh, throughout the motherboard for those places to mount 3D, ma 3D printed devices. Now, back to the motherboard itself. Now that we've taken a look at the multi-GPU support earlier, we did mention that it had two-way SLI technology support, as well as AMD three-way Crossfire X. Storage-wise is handled by the Z270 chipset. Again, that's the two M.2 connections, as well as the six SATA ports, and does support RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10, as along with Intel Rapid Storage Technology and Smart Response. It also has support for Intel Optane Memory Ready. So that should be nice. Now, as far as the LAN goes, it is an Intel NIC. It also supports anti-surge LAN guard so that, you know, when you're plugging it in, you don't really short yourself out if you mess up. And ROG Game First technology that helps you with, along with the software, prioritize packages. Now, the audio is handled by the ROG Supreme FX. It's eight-channel high-definition audio codec. Supports jack detection, multi-streaming, front panel jack retasking. It's high-quality 120 decibel um, stereo playback output with a 113 decibel signal noise recording input. It also features the Supreme FX shielding technology and is completely separated from the rest of the motherboard, featuring support for the Sonic Radar 3 and Sonic Studio 3. As far as USB ports, we've got one USB 3.1 front panel connector as well as just a standard 3.0 connector. The Intel chipset supports itself the six USB 3.0 connectors and four on the back and two are at the mid port. And the Z270 chipset also has support for six USB 2.0 ports, four on the back and again a port on the bottom for the front to have two. Of course we have a plethora of ROG exclusive features from overclocking to now, most of it's for overclocking and gaming features, but this has just been a quick look at the motherboard itself. We're going to get more into the performance of the motherboard while we do a full build using this motherboard, this CPU, in a BitPhoenix Shogun case. So if you found the video entertaining or informative or anything else like that, feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and we will catch you all in the next video.